So we will also be taking a virtual group picture uh, at the end of the event uh, with all our uh, uh, which mean speakers and also all our uh, event organizers. So do be camera ready and to turn on your camera for a photography session. And the, la the last one is the interest of time. Please type your message at the chat box and we will address the relevant question that we pose. Okay, so uh, we start this session by having a welcoming remarks from our own program director, Associate Professor Dr. Guido Beni. Uh, Dr. Guido Beni, so please, the screen is yours. Yeah, good morning, everyone. So I forgot to unmute myself. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, especially to associate uh, young associate professor Asli Yusuf. Yeah, that uh, you are now uh, will provide your insight in your experience about the career in social innovation in Keynes. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the Bachelor of Social Science. We have two programs. Yeah. The first is a social innovation case, and secondly, international relations. And there are a lot of career prospects that maybe many don't under, don't are not aware. Yeah, that the job prospect. Can I'm they, talking? To you. Yeah, they can work in uh, social organization, also in business. There are many many avenues that open if you learn social innovation in Keynes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, I understand that um, at young pro at young associate professor as if you so we will uh, elaborate more on that. Yeah. Okay. Actually, in the world, reports say that social science graduate is needed globally and has the best job prospect. You can see from BBC News. Yeah. Social science graduate have the best job prospect. The Forbes say future tax job we need social science graduate, and then British Council wrote that. 55% of professional leaders hold a social science or humanities degree. And you can see from the pie chart, 44% yeah, of professional leaders has social science degree. And younger leaders are more likely to hold a degree in social science or humanities than older leaders. So uh, I, uh, I invited our students yeah, that enrolled in March 2021. Yeah, and, uh, I assure you that uh, you are on the right track yeah, for your success in future. Yeah. Why? Yeah, although the Malaysian, yeah, this is the former Minister of Education, Higher Education, that was Idris Yusuf, he said that unemployment of social science in Malaysia is low. Yeah. Why? Why is so different with the picture of the world? Okay. Well, uh, we found that the current Malaysian social science program are focused more on theories and concept, lack of practice. Thus, graduates are not ready for work as they lack job skills and work experience. That's why the Bachelor of Social Science, Taylor University will create leaders with knowledge, skill, attitude, behavior, and work experience. How? Through Malaysia's first work-based learning social science degree yeah so this differentiate us with the rest in malaysia or even in southeast asia so uh this is the the key uh, slide for today yeah this is the reason for choosing the bachelor of social science at Taylor university which is mainly is the two you one i work work based learning so let me uh, tell you uh, what is uh, WBL actually. To you meaning two years university and one year, one year industrial placement. So in the two years, you will learn from our academics as well as top national and international social industry leaders. So in the first two years, top national and international Social, uh, social industry leaders mentor the students. 
they have become our young professors yeah and we also use emerging leaders greenhouse so by having them uh, teaching you you will develop professional networking event even before graduation so we have also other events yeah that uh, will increase your professional networking for example social science seminar series and then conferences lunch seminars workshop model united nation and model asean summit okay. and then one year industrial placement this is this week is this will be done in the final year yeah, of your study final year placement at top industry so in the final year students will be firstly they will be introduced to industry practices and then they will be exposed to contemporary national and international issues in their area of specialization in this case is social innovation and change yeah and will manage and lead real life projects under guidance and supervision of industry coaches and university tutor so yeah three years study at bss you will have hand on one year working experience and this working experience is in management and leadership of real life projects yeah, real life projects so surely this is uh, this will be a game changer yeah uh, for a, a higher education of social science in malaysia and southeast asia yeah i will uh, glance this uh, uh, fast yeah we have 22 adjunct professors they are leaders in social industry that has been appointed as adjunct professor or adjunct associate professor with us yeah you can see they are they came from uh, news media from think tank from leading consultant ngos yeah even they are also from suhakam international ngos for example okay from business yeah from business yeah we have here uh, Ms. Asli Yusuf, the head of the strategy patronas yeah Yeah, we can see a lot of big names, yeah, the leaders in this field that uh, has become, has been appointed as a young professor with us. And also, it's supported also by, uh, sorry, this is only uh, 50 10, yeah, 10 visiting professors. So, um, yeah, this is also to ensure that you will work in the final year in the uh, in uh, industry, yeah. We have signed 14 memorandum of agreement. So these 14 organization have agreed yeah, to accept students, accept students for one year work-based learning. And we will we keep expand this number yeah, to provide students with more opportunities. Yeah, with, with that, I would like to Thank you for hearing my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Digido, for the brief welcome remarks and introduction about the Social Innovation and Change degree program. And I hope students and parents who are joining this session will have a better insight about this exciting degree. And for more info, you can contact Dr. Digido personally. Okay, now uh, we're going to focus to the main highlights for today with the topic careers in social innovation and change. And without further ado, so I would like to introduce our esteemed speaker for today's uh, adjunct associate professor, Asrif Yusuf. So Asrif Yusuf is currently a senior manager at Petronas Leadership Center. He joined the company as an analyst in 2007 and has had various roles in strategic planning, business development and joint venture management including corporate social responsibility rules. Uh, Asif Yusuf also holds a master's degree in social innovation from Cambridge University, an MBA from Imperial College London, and currently pursuing his doctorate studies at Durham University. He is now an adjunct associate professor 
at Thales University and an adjunct lecturer at University Technology Petronas. Uh, welcome, uh, Prof. Aswif. We are very glad to have you today and to share with us your academic journey and as well as your working experience with regard to our teams today. Okay, Thank you, so Zaim. Thank you for having me and everyone. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well and safe. Okay, so let us start uh, by a brief introduction about yourself, uh, Prof. Asli, and also your educational background and academic journey. Mm, I think you have briefly summarized it earlier, Zaim. But uh, basically, I'm currently um, a senior manager at Petronas Leadership Center, which is the building behind me. It's still under construction. Uh, Inshallah, in the quarter one of next year, it will be ready. So um, I've been with Petronas for 14 years uh, across various functions, as you mentioned earlier, um, with um, an exposure in... Uh, corporate social responsibility as well. Yeah. So that is the angle which I would like to perhaps elaborate further later, Zaim. Um, outside of work, I'm also a student. I've been a student for the past five years. My undergraduate studies was in engineering, industrial engineering. Um, but when I started working, I've been in non-engineering roles, planning, uh, business development and so forth. Um, but about five to six years after working, I felt the need to challenge myself, which led me to pursue uh, the MBA. Um, and then after that, I felt like challenging myself again, which then brought me to the uh, social innovation program at, at Cambridge. And now I'm doing my uh, doctorate where I'm doing research on organizational learning. Yeah. Um, so... I'm, I'm, I'm living a life of, of three tracks, lah, if you will. Um, the first track is, of course, being a father and um, uh, leader of my family, member of the society. <laughs> Second track is the professional track, building the um, career at work. And the third one is the um, academic track, which I'm building concurrently. Zaim. So briefly, those are some facts about me. Wow, wow, great, great, colorful uh, achievement. Okay, so uh, uh, next move to uh, next question. Question number two here is, why did you choose to obtain a social degree, uh, particularly in social innovation? And what was your motivation back then? So as I mentioned earlier, Zai, my undergraduate was in engineering, but in terms of working exposure, I did not. Um, pursue a career in, in engineering, yeah? So um, in about six to seven years uh, of working, I had the opportunity to get involved in a project called VISTA, whereby Petronas held partnerships with vocational colleges around the country to help them in improving their curriculum, providing with a conducive learning environment for vocational education, as well as uh, bringing our expertise in technical and engineering to the education sector. So this cross-sectional relationship sort of um, opened my eyes to the opportunities that are available out there because we're talking about scale here. The number of students who benefit from the vocational colleges uh, is large, right? Um, thousands of graduates come out of vocational colleges and then end up working either in industries or uh, starting their own uh, services, either for residential or industrial areas, in areas such as welding, pipe fitting, building management, electrical, and so forth. So that showed me the opportunity that existed between the private and the uh, public or educational sector. And then I wanted to go deeper and um, analyze what's available out there. So uh, that brought me to then discover the program that was uh, available at Cambridge University. Um, fortunately, I got in um, and furthered my research in higher education still. So my, my thesis was on the application of WACAF as a sustainable model for uh, higher education funding, especially for public uh, universities. 
in in Malaysia. So that was my master's thesis. So um, yeah, so I it was was never in the plan, Zaim, uh, to study social science, but I felt that the MBA was my first stint with what's available out there in the social sciences a bit of organizational behavior, a bit of marketing and management, leadership, just trying to understand people, right? So, so then that brought me to the social innovation degree. And then what I'm doing now uh, in my doctoral research is a bit of behavioral science, a bit of organizational behavior, and a bit of human capital development. So that multidisciplinary uh, convergence that happens in the research space is something that excites me. It might not sound exciting, but it does excite me, <laughs> and it keeps me, you know, keep on wanting to know more, to know more, and uh, keep on reading about it. Um, that's that's my take. <laughs> yes, Prof. Uh, and and it brings uh, us to the next question because you have mentioned about your motivation uh, uh, and then exploring a new ventures and so on. Uh, next question is about the misconception or stigma when we talk about you know, social science degree or social innovation, you know, program and so on. Some say that uh, this type of program or this type of degree uh, uh, is not relevant. Some even say that those who cannot get into the sciences program or degree uh, or who do not have a strong academic background tend to study this type of program. So have you experienced this and uh, what would you think about this? this this stigma or the misconception? The stigma is kind of real. It is out there. But I'm a living example of somebody who transitioned from uh, an, a training in engineering back in college into working to a non-engineering field and building a career out of that. Alhamdulillah. Um, but I think there's also that, that stigma is also driven by the movement for STEM. Yeah, Zaim. Yeah. We so can't true. deny the importance of STEM and the potential that it brings together, the prospect that it brings together for students who are undergoing those programs, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think it's a balancing act that every economy has to put in place as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the stigma is perhaps stronger in our parts of the world because from my engagement and communication or experience in engaging with um, industries or academics from the Western world, <laughs> that stigma is not as big as it is over there because you have graduates of English literature, classics, and, and so forth going into industries such as consulting and, and, and many others, yeah? So when we look into the fragment of an organization, definitely there are organizations who need the... Uh, sorry, somebody, I need to, somebody needs to mute, I think. Can everybody hear me? Clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah can, can, can. Please, please continue. Clear? Yeah. Okay, cool. Where was I? Uh, so, Zaim, the um, Western, uh, fragment of Western an organization Western. has both elements of um, the uh, fragment has the um, engineering parts and also the non-technical parts, right? And for in, 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 in the literature of organizational behavior, we have seen how both needs to coexist in harmony for the company to prosper. So if you look across many sectors, manufacturing, F&B, both in the pub, public or private space, um, job opportunities are always there, right? For, for people who are also social science graduate. So the stigma is also driven by culture, is driven by the movement for STEM. We can see how STEM is being promoted and encouraged across many levels of education from, from uh, primary, secondary, all the way to tier theory, right? So that, that's why um, that, that stigma exists, yeah? Zaim, sorry, I think I 
I can hear myself. So somebody might need to mute. Let's resist. Hear myself. So somebody might need to mute. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Everyone? Yeah, yeah. Hello? We can we can listen to you clearly, no problem. Okay. I I'm still okay. hearing myself somehow. Can you allow me to leave and join again? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Give me two seconds, yeah. Okay, we will let uh, our professor uh, to join us back again. So, I think this is normal, right? <laughs> For uh, using uh, online webinars. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Can, can. Of course, yeah. We can, can you hear me okay now? Yeah, better, better. Better, eh? Sorry about the technical problem. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries, no issues. Nah. Okay, Ryan. Right. Okay, we can, uh, we can, we can hear it. Okay, eh? Uh, Are you okay? Proceed, okay. We can continue, right? Yeah, um, okay, so the next question. Okay, so just now you have elaborated on the... <laughs> just now you have already elaborated about the stigma, the misperception, and so on. So, um, and uh, next question yeah. is, is about your uh, notice that you were involved in, uh, you know, inside and outside the campus. Uh, that, of course, uh, bring or shape your or your experience or shape, shape your thinking and action uh, uh, as for now. What are the some activities that you involve in, particularly in the social innovation uh, project or activities? As I mentioned earlier, Zaim, my involvement um, in the working space was through the VISTA program when I was at Petronas. Yeah? So that was in the practical context. And I was doing that as a staff of the organization. Now, as an academic, when I was studying and looking into the application of WACAF um, for higher education, that enabled me to open another spectrum of the possibilities of social innovation, especially for education and especially in giving access to a wider um, demography of students to the, the, the literally a wide to the, the, the opportunities that um, to the, so there's that, that practice context, Zaim. So social science is a very uh, broad topic, as we mentioned earlier, you have that factor of how it can be applied at the workplace and then how we can how the body of literature is in itself a fascinating area lah. So students who undergo uh, social science development would have that opportunity to go both on the applied side of it as well on the research side of it if they do want to pursue uh, academics. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is, is we still in the education you know, education. Uh, matters uh, because of course we have 90% uh, here is all of prospect students today <laughs> hopefully okay uh, uh, when you yeah. heard about the work based learning yeah. that have been offered by uh, our school uh, what was your initial thought what is your response I think is First of all, is an innovative um, mode of learning, Zaim, because learning can happen in the classroom, 
learning can happen through coaching and learning can happen in the workplace. If we look into the 70-20-10 model, 70% of learning happens at the workplace. So with the 2 plus 1 uh, model, whereby two years is learning and then one year is on campus. Yeah. Is my audio okay? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So if we look into the model of two years um, of on-campus learning and one year of um, work-based learning, I think work-based learning, that gives a head start to the learners. Because as we see, the main struggle of students is about getting internships. So with the partnerships that tailors have uh, formed, with the organizations that Dr. Guido shared earlier, I feel that that gives a huge opportunity for students to really develop themselves, build personality, feel that students to really very grow before they join the workplace. And who knows, that second, that third year that they spend with the organization could also be an opportunity for them to be absorbed upon graduation after the program, yeah? So it gives them the head start. It's a very innovative format which enables that learning at the workplace. And also I think it's a great measure of building character. It's enabled the yes, yes. So yeah, yeah. But this degree allows you to have one year placement okay to the uh, industry. So like what you mentioned just now, Prof Asif, so it gives benefit to the students. It gives also uh, uh, a more understanding about what will be, you know, uh, as the real life, but not theory like what we learn in, 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 in the classroom. Okay? What is the real, okay? So yeah. Uh, Next is about, uh, uh, we are done with the education discussion. Now we move to the uh, focus or shift the focus to the money matters now. Uh, uh, about the careers prospect, about whether the students can now earn money, okay, or, or have a good, are always concerned about this, like, about the employability of the graduates, uh, and are they able to make money or not? Uh, and many believe that social scientists or social science graduates do not make much money. <laughs> what is your take on this, uh, uh, Prof. Asrif? I think Zayim, the opportunity is still relatively, if we look in if we look into, again, the fragment of an organization, as I mentioned earlier, there is that portion of, um, of um, technical professionals and non-technical. If we look into the functions of uh, human resource and non if we look into the functions of business planning, communication, marketing, and so forth, uh, the majority of those could also have social science graduate uh, being supplied in organizations. Yeah. So Zaim, my, my take in that when it comes to making money, um, I don't think social science graduates are limited by um, the opportunity that's available out there. It's driven by the stigma, number one. And number two, culturally also, we are more accustomed to the um, conventional role. We are more accustomed of engineer, lawyer, doctor, and so forth, yeah? So out there, you know how the World Economic Forum also says how jobs for students today are still not in existence yet. Yeah. So that is why I feel that the versatility and diversity of social science and how broad it is as a subject is actually an advantage for students or graduates. Diversity is actually an advantage when they go into the job place because then their scope of work uh, with work that they can apply for narrow as compared to those who might be in the um, the other other fields that are more technical, if you will. Yeah. Zaim, so um, I think the sentiment is that driven by culture and perception. But in actual, 
uh, practice, I, I don't think we are as limited as it is today because functions are becoming more diverse and requirements from uh, organizations are becoming more open as well. Not just in the private sector, public and social and education sector uh, also. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, Prof. Astrid, so now you're working with the Tronas, right? So in, in, your, in, your, you know, in your department, in your whole organization, so how many percent that social scientists or social grad, social science graduate students working with Petronas can you give it? I don't have a number of hand, Zahim, but what I can say is that yeah. I can, I have seen that in terms I can, I have seen can that in terms force uh, I just in my organization, but in can that in more and more uh, and not just um I organize force but like, we are seeing sectors that they did not uh, uh, students who just end up so uh, global in both to so we are seeing banking sector we are seeing more engineers in the venture capital sector. Um, we're seeing more social science uh, graduates in consulting, in public service as well. Yeah, Zaim. So that movement of, of, of people going from a social science degree to functions that are in public, that science degree, there are not many sociologists position available out there. Sociology, Dr. Malati could perhaps. But the skills, the way of thinking, the critical thinking methods that they learn from a social sociology training is, is, is invaluable as they bring it to the workplace because that is how they then build relationships, problem solving, try to design solutions, try to improve processes. Yeah, Zayim. So the stuff that we try and do at the workplace is not entirely taught in the classroom. But the way of thinking, the preparedness of students, all social sciences, I believe, um, could come in really handy when they go into the workplace, when they deal with people, they deal with problem both internal and external. And thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, Prof. Astrid has Okay, uh, next question will be emphasis on your career experience eh, from Astrid. Uh, so, how has the training in your social innovation uh, or the experience that you have contributed towards your career trajectory or your career progress? Can you share a uh, few examples? About So if we if if we look into the my own career journey, Zaim, I move on an average of two and a half of every two and a half to three years. Zaim, of every two and a half to three years across various journeys of two and a half of every past fourteen years in trying to understand how organizations work and it, you know how companies coexist with society um, and it's also driven by my own experience in always trying to um, trying trying something new yeah therefore I think the the skill of trying to sorry the the curiosity and also the keenness of wanting to learn is something that has driven me into the many trying or the keenness of wanting to so i'm more of a generalist in terms of my career but what i'm doing in terms of the academic track that i'm building at the same time that is where i'm trying to go deep above the time that is where i'm trying to go deep here so at work i try to cover a lot of bases and try to know as much as i can uh, but in my studies, I try to complement that by going deep. Right? So there's that balance of breath, breath and, and depth that I'm um, always trying to maneuver. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So based on your experience just now, you, you, 
you're hopping from one place to one department and 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 looking into your uh working experience managing uh organizations or depart knowledge uh that you have learned especially especially in 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 managing conflict and also to to manage people so how how can you help how did this degree can help you what are the skills that we taught there Actually, I don't think it's in the degree um, entirely, um, but I think it's a bit more on the way that uh, we think, yeah, Zaim, as I mentioned earlier. So, so personally, I, I just believe in two things. Number one is empathy and number two is curiosity. And empathy is in the way that we try to understand others, build relationships, and then help others in the confines of our organization, regardless of what levels of uh, relationship that we build, right? And curiosity is about being good at what we do, yeah, Zaim? So in terms of the degree helping me to uh, be good or well at what I do, it's more on the way, way of thinking. It's more on the relationships that you build with others is the one that helps um, you to then um, uh, be more effective and efficient at, at the workplace. I will um, be efficient. I'm so uh, intrigued by the diversity. I will uh, be more effective. I, I'm so uh, intrigued. I believe that, 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 that endless opportunities that the students have when they study social science um, is one that could really be a strength for them when they join, join the workplace. Is the different um, be a strength for people as well. I think that is one that is really a workplace to bring to the uh, in their teams when they work. Be able to bring when they play their part. Uh, About uh, uh, you know uh, able to go. So uh, so does this type of value or skills? It's very important to meet the expectation of the industry nowadays. Sorry again, Zai. Sorry, Zai, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Yeah, my question is about uh, whether the, the value, the skills uh, of, of empathy of, of uh, you know, helping others and so on. So does this meet the expectation of the industry as a whole? As as industry, oh, so do we, do, we, do, we, do, I, do, you know, empathy, personally feel, others oh, and all these? I, so I personally feel that empathy is not really something that's required by industries only, it's required for you in anywhere you are right therefore um i think building suddenly anywhere you are trade and that's more of something that individuals bring as they join any organizations out there regardless it's for work or for personal development or since join any organ society right uh, on um on work life research or on the organization like that dynamics, you would then also notice that the element of um, emotional intelligence is becoming more important in terms of what employers look for as well, right? The challenge is that uh, yes, look for as well. Exactly. It's very subjective it's, and it's unseen and it can't be acquired overnight. That the breadth of knowledge that students uh, Ghana when they undergo their undergraduate learning or in the case of this program in that the third year where they go into the um, industry that is where they can really hone the level of empathy the level of maturity that's required for them to become an effective member of uh, the organizations that they join and they build their career later on or even if they become entrepreneurs yeah Agree, agree with that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, social innovation change degree, you know, social sciences degree, and so on. So, uh, 
a lot of people think that this is very much aligned to the NGOs type of work uh, or academic type of work, or non government organization, or you know, an education is industry and so on. But you, you can use this degree or you can use all the values that you have learned uh, to other corporate sectors, for example. So what will you advise uh, uh, to them? If, if they want to venture it in corporate sectors. If we look into the requirements of organizations today, um, in the past, it is about bringing value to shareholders. Yeah, but now I think it's about creating shared value uh, with society as well. And if we look into the frame of sustainable corporate and if sustainability, we have the elements of environment, we have the elements of society, mm -hmm. and, and we have the elements of environment trying to conserve the environment and being responsible wherever you operate. Uh, similarly, for society, it's about um, um, growing together with, with societies near where, where you operate, right? Now, if you look into the requirement of organizations to have that mindset, not just for people who are in sustainable development across organizations, but across the entire workforce, I think that highlights the importance of how social innovations can come into play. And this cuts across many sectors, Zaim, um, from the technology sector, from manufacturing, FNB, and so forth, energy, and so forth. Yeah. So we can see um, how um, not just the awareness, but also knowledge and putting into practice from uh, responsible citizens of of the, the industry is becoming more and more apparent across many workforce of, of organizations. Yeah, Zayim? So, so I think that that's how it works. So, so it comes into play today it, with commitments that they are making. Those are promises and they need to be the are uh, coming up with it by the people who will be working. So, so my take is that the element of um, good governance, environmental conservation, and overall corporate sustainability is becoming more and more important, which is then also providing the opportunity for social science graduates. Okay, uh, Professor Steve, uh, uh, I think we cannot run away carriers and demands. Uh, in the field of social sciences, uh, particularly in the field of social innovation and change. Uh, do, do, do we have any uh, demand on these, any changes on, on, on the carriers when we talk about COVID-19 pandemic? So as I mentioned earlier, Zaim, the requirement for staff who have the awareness and also the critical thinking when it comes to being um, a sustainable organization, that it is becoming more important and evident in the commitments that organizations have made, net carbon zero commitments and so forth. Yeah. Now, going beyond that, we look into the frame of mind that organizations would expect from their people. Yeah. So I would not zoom straight into social innovation because social innovation in itself is still broad, although it is a sub-discipline of social science. But I'm just more uh, interested in the way that um, social science come into play in the way that people within an organization think, yeah, across mm -hmm. many functions. You could be an engineer, but the way of thinking uh, in become, being um, a, a, a responsible uh, member of the workforce, that is where the social science thinking comes into play. So with that, the demand for people who have that way of thinking, which does not come easy, which comes with maturity, which comes with experience and also ex expertise, that is very important um, in the frame of the organization. I don't have any numbers, Zaim, 
but mm -hmm. if you look into the desirable jobs out there because mm -hmm. the range of jobs that are in demand today is so different just 10 years ago that is an indicator how diverse and how dynamic and how fast it would change yeah which is why i still believe that the diversity of social science the 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 broad nature of it gives versatility versatility and flexibility for the graduates to then apply for many types of jobs and then available it's also important to understand that when it comes to passion and discovering passion not everybody you know people discover what they're good at or what they're passionate about at different phases of life right mm -hmm. therefore um with that with by by exploring and con being in the journey of, of of discovery always continuously i think that's also a measure of discovering what you really want to do for a career later on yeah so i'm just going to look into the um changes of types of job in the workplace to then uh, highlight on how the demand is we can see how the threat of automation for example um is making its way into the manufacturing sector and also that is potentially a threat for those who are, have been in the production line all this while right but what social science graduates bring in is then again the way of critical thinking that might not be able to be replaced by robots or ai even if they can the level of sophistication would not be at par as to what the human brain is capable of yeah so again i am as you can see a trend i always go back to the way of thinking way of thinking because that to me is the differentiating factor of individuals as they go uh, and build a career yeah yeah indeed thank yeah. you thank you for the speech yeah mm. um Oh, we have uh, one question from the participant, uh, from Sarah Abedi here. Uh, as a full-time employee with Petronas, does Prof. Asrif need to get his management's approval to contribute his services to other organization? And does he get to enjoy his full Petronas pay every month since he has multiple sources of income? I do not have a multiple source of income. <laughs> I don't. I only have one. I only have one job, and yeah. um, I only serve uh, one organization. Um, and the rest is, of course, with management approval. Yeah. With management approval. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. To, uh, thank you for uh, Sarah. Mm. And you. if you want to, you know, pursue that professional track and also that academic track um time management is very important as well so i study mostly in the, in the weekends yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah so you are juggling with that you know family study. yeah but if you enjoy studying it doesn't feel like a burden much it's yeah it's just something that you do anyway might as well yeah. try to make research out of it that's what i'm saying yeah 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 agree, agree. okay so uh uh, yeah, another question is about, is there any advice for those who uh, previously studied non-social science background, for example, IT or, you know, uh, accounting, uh, can they venture into uh, a social science? You are a living proof, so, so maybe you can give one or two advice on that. The answer is yes, and also I believe the learning happens at work, like I mentioned earlier, yeah, Zaim the biggest challenge is taking the first step because taking the first step comes together with a lot of doubt and also um yeah you, you you doubt yourself because you know in terms of training formal training is perhaps in one field and then how you then switch your mindset and your skills into another field now as i shared with you earlier i change functions in an average about every three years and every one of those changes require me to reskill myself so that mindset of continuous improvement, continuous learning, and also wanting to always reskill yourself is very, very important. And if we look into the literature of talent development today, upskilling and reskilling are two of the most um, uh, prominent um, action items by organizations today, especially reskilling. As you then, reskilling is not entirely about changing from one discipline to another. It could also be um, changing the way of work. 
as we said earlier, right? Automation comes in. You need to be more aware of what the technology holds, and then how that can improve save time, save money, and so forth. Yeah, Zay. Um. So to me, yes, the opportunity is definitely there, but undergoing the change um, requires you to take the first step. Um, and taking the first step, although it comes with a lot of doubt, um, I would I would hold to believe that the learning takes place at the workplace. You are not expected to be 100% fully ready when you jump into a, a role. That's my take. Yes, yes. Indeed, yeah, correct, correct. Uh, yeah, I think this is the, the last question. Uh, it's about to it become an agent of change. Or, um, uh, someone is going to be influenced. Okay, uh, and, 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 and can you, do you consider that uh, social media is one of the methods that we say about uh, become an agent of change, to share your experience or to, to share your, your work, what you have done, uh, to call out for you know, uh, action, for, to call out for people to come together and work uh, to, to change the society, to do a better, uh, a better, you know, uh, Better initiative uh, to the society. Do you think? Uh, you think personally? You think social media is good? Do I, I, I would zoom out a bit and just go into the internet because then that expedites communication as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, so networks are being built faster. Communications are, you know, knowledge and information are being transpired faster as well. And as we can um, see today, many movements are being brought about online. And today, uh, with COVID-19, everything is shifting online as well. Yeah, Zaim? So I wouldn't constrict it to social media only. I think it goes beyond that. Um, the entire ecosystem that the internet has enabled has really makes everything faster. Yeah. Um, but I think students should also take this opportunity, yeah. Because as education is also going online, um, opportunity to contribute is also uh, shifting into the online space as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, so I think social media and to a large extent the, 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 the internet is, is a really important tool. Okay, thank you, thank you, Professor Sri. So, uh, participants or particular uh, students, do you have any question to uh, Prof. Sri? Any more questions to ask? So because uh, time is, we have already like, like five, six, five to six more minutes. Any questions? Any last question from the audience from the participants? Here? Um, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, yes, please. Yeah, this is Anindita. Uh, my Hi. question to Associate Professor uh, Asri would be uh, two questions. Yeah, one is that what type of data do you think will be relevant uh, for students specializing in this area, would it be a mix of qualitative and quantitative? Or do you think either one is going to be more important for the future? So that's my first question. And my second question is, what type of digital skills and knowledge do you think uh, are required as uh, for, for our future graduates? Thank you, Prof. I think it's a hybrid. At least in my line of research, it's been a hybrid of both quantitative and, and qualitative uh, data. Um, but I think the, it's more heavy on the qualitative side, mainly because I believe insights are mostly gained from the qualitative data, although trendings are more um, can be seen with uh, quantitative data in large amounts, of course. So um, I think it's, it's a mix, um, uh, Doc, and also I think the way that qualitative data is being gathered today is also becoming more, people are becoming more creative in, in, in gathering qualitative data. And I think the internet, as I had mentioned earlier, is, 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 is making it much more uh, accessible as well. Yeah. Now, going into digital skills, I would zoom out to say networking is the most important one, although that's not entirely digital, but the digital solutions is making networking more seamless today. Yeah. So I think for, for students, I mean, it's, it's about reaching out, doc, and I think it's about 
trying to build the network across many sectors and not just to confine it within their area of study or within the stakeholders that they are uh, familiar with. Yeah. So that's how I feel. Um, so networking is not an, 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 a digital skill per se, but I think using digital solutions to then enhance and make uh, networking uh, more effective uh, end of all, I think is, is very important for the students because it's all about building a relationship and you'll never know what opportunities lies out there. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Thank you, Dr. Nita, for the questions. Uh, maybe one more question if you have. From students or students quite shy, lah, from us here. <laughs> <laughs> this is our, our March 2020. We start next week. <laughs> any question uh, from the students you have? Let, let me check the chat box. Do you have any more questions? Okay. Okay, so if there is no more questions, so uh, I would like to thank you again for Prof. Asri All right. for your knowledge and your experience sharing. And I would like also to thank all of you for your interest and inquiries. Uh, I think this uh, session has, has provided or a lot of needed information about working with others, about you know, the, those, the values, skills that needed uh, to become the agent of change. Uh, I say, Prof. Asi also mentioned about uh, financial reward, okay, about future career with regards to uh, this degree. Uh, so on behalf of a Social Innovation and Change Program, so I'm sure, uh, to, I'm sure hope we have you join us in futures for the students and we can create more ages of change and contribute to the global well-being. Uh, so before we officially end, so let us uh, take a group picture for keep safe. Okay. So, so please turn on your video. Camera like video, like camera. <laughs> okay. So uh Dr. Malati, can you help me on this taking the picture? Okay. Okay, so everybody, uh, look at his, uh, look at your camera and not at the visual that you can see of yourself. Okay. Um, very nice. You get to see beautiful people. A few people are opening their cameras. Um, so maybe while we are taking picture, you can refrain yourself from typing any messages for a while. Otherwise, it will pop up and cover some of the beautiful faces. Okay. Okay, so now look at the camera and smile. One, two, three, smile. Hold on. Let's do one more. One, two, and smile. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Zayn. All right. Hey, okay, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you again, everyone. So hope to all of you have a great weekend ahead. Bye-bye. Take care.